Folks, welcome back. My name is Rooney. We're watching Alpha Investments, where I continue to fight with the flu and get my hair looking really spiffy. 1983 word here. Today's conversation is all the hoop nanny hoop laws regarding Wizards of the Coast Hasbro's new announcement regarding the new secret lair, raining kitty cats and lovable little fuzzy doggies. Um, as always, immediately we're seeing the uh, flare up from the social medias, the MySpace, the Facebook, Discords, and Reddits of there's no value, you know. Um, oh, I'm sorry. $150 secret lair commander deck. Um, the kitty cats and dogs. Honestly, looks pretty adorable. Artwork looks really beautiful and very cute. Um, I'm a sucker for artwork. You guys know that. Um, obviously, immediately out of the gate, we're already seeing the internet mob yell saying the price point is way too high. They keep raising the prices on these commander decks and specialty secret lairs, and they're not worth it. They're just game pieces. God, that mean you would think by now. It's been like six months, four months we've been using it. You made a shirt. If you guys want to support me, remember this channel is sponsored by myself, the patrons, you guys. And uh, you can click the link below in the description for eBay. I think we have 60 or 50 shirts left. It's like 20 of each size for medium, large, extra large. The other couple thousand are gone. So uh, please, click the link, buy a shirt about your game. Remember, this shirt is worth more than your game pieces. And I make $6 profit on you every time you think about that. Okay, so we already seen the pushback. We're seeing the articles. We're seeing the mobs. Of, There's no value. Where's the financial value? If you want 150 plus tax, we need cards of value. But they shouldn't have value because they're fucking game pieces. Uh, so it writes itself. I just have to show up and put my beautiful, wrinkly, hair-losing self on camera. The news writes itself. So, I want to give you all the Rudy opinion, because it's probably going to make a lot of you... We got we to trigger people. We got to keep the emotion flowing. We can't have all this positive stuff in the market and prices upticking. We can't be all happy, because now things are looking good. Come on! Bring it back down! Um, be very blunt with you all. Um, based on uh, Chris Cox wanting to keep his job... And Mark Rosewater never mentioning about the Collector's Edition Reserve List Magic 30 event again. Um, I actually believe the secret layers moving forward um, for financial value and collectability are actually very attractive. And um, based on them, and, and I quote, and I quote on the screen, $149.99. Printed in English only, a limited print run, and only available while supplies last. As we know, they're adjusting how they're printing, distributing, and how long they're allowing the secret layer system launch, deployment, execution, you know, to last. Um, it actually makes it a little bit more collectible. It, it puts on the CCG, Rudy, you're lying again because it's TCG. No, no, no. We only spin things to make it sound like Rudy knows what he's talking about. On the CCG, um, the first C is becoming more inflated. The first C in CCG is becoming bigger. And bigger, bouncy things make us happy. So this kind of makes it a little bit more collectible and possibly a higher probability of prices drifting upwards moving forward because there's kind of, it, you know, the market's going to have a harder time determining the success and the value in how to price these things. Because the market's not going to be able to say, oh, this has been sitting online for like a month on Secret Lair. Nobody wants it. You know, the market's going to have to be able to figure out and accept and reject it a little bit more creatively. Um, it does, again, from my perspective, in this shifting market where we are not seeing everything go to zero, um, this kind of makes Secret Lairs moving forward um, a little bit more attractive. And yes, the irony of everybody complaining there's no financial value and they want cheap cards to be game pieces, but now they're upset because there aren't expensive cards is just, it's just a fucking beautiful thing. You can't hurt, you can't write scripts like this. Um, but I don't see big collapses in this stuff. And see, that's, remember on this channel for the last, God, is this really year nine? The last eight to nine years on this channel, the key is the downside risk. Okay, especially when you look at like a secret layer product. And when we look at secret layers, you have some of them that have gone up in price incredibly fast and incredibly well. $40 secret layers for $200. <coughs> we see a lot of dramatic upticks.
but that's only maybe like 10% of the secret layers. Another, the big middle standard main deviate, the main part of that bell curve, most secret layers are kind of flat or they go up a little bit. But again, secret layers are only a couple of years old. And then of course you have the bottom half of that curve, which is a lot of secret layers either stay the same or they erode 10, 20% in value. But in reality, if you step back and think about that, like on Wall Street, if you're, if you're a you know, degenerate options gambler trader thinking you're going to become a billionaire, wear Lambo, you know, if you take $1,000 and place a bet on Wall Street, you can try to make your 1000 go to 2000 or 10000 or your 1000 goes to zero. So when you open up that alligator mouth, you spread that alligator and you make her that wide, the alligator, no giggities, um, you know, the variance swings against you and for you. You open up that variance and it makes it very scary. But on secret layer, to have the alligator mouth spread open that far, giggity? No. Um, and the downside only being like negative 20%, but the upside, some secret layers go up 1, 200%. That's very attractive. That's very interesting. And um, that's assuming all the game pieces and the cards themselves don't actually do anything. And a lot of people on the internet just say, oh, look, look at the checklist of cards, Rudy. I mean, you know, the cards have, I mean, why would I even pay 170 with tax for this, this commander deck? I mean, there's not even $170 worth of cards unless you count a bunch of 10 cent bulk cards. And I'm like, yeah, but some of these, even the basic lands with some of these kitty cats and dog art, you can't assign a clear financial value to some of those cards. And it makes it a little tricky to blanket say it's a bad product or good product. Um, it's going to be up to the market to determine the value of a, a bunch of kitty cats on a basic land or a bunch of doggies or something, you know, it's, and you do not underestimate the loyalty and love that humans have for pets. I mean, the, the love for, you know, cats and dogs and man's best friend and kitty cats and, you know, it's a very, you know, it, it creates an emotional response. So, um, that does create kind of a wild card of financial value on what kind of demand there will be for those things. And I've been telling you all again, and I'm going to restate it as we go to the second half of this video. Do not underestimate this market moving forward. And most people on the internet continue to be wrong. Including me! I've gotten a shit ton of stuff wrong. <laughs> Rudy admitted he gets things wrong. <laughs> you, know, there's, you know, most things on the internet and most opinions are incorrect. Nobody on these fancy MySpace Facebook websites with all the scholars and lab coats were... Nobody predicted all the collector boxes upticking. Every single smart person on the internet says Shocklands to a dollar, Ravnica Remastered's going to collapse, and I was the only dumbass that everybody made fun of for buying thousands of collector boxes of Ravnica, and everybody goes, oh god, he better push those heavy bags. Yeah, right into your stepsister, because guess what? Once again, the internet was wrong. The people who love to pound the keyboard, and of course they eat their crayons with me on a Saturday, they are wrong. It's very difficult to predict this market. And it's not just the game piece army. It's difficult to predict a, a modern era like this, okay? Because we don't know what Hasbro and Wizards is doing behind the scenes. All we can do is take the clues they give us, and we have to assume they're telling the truth, and that they are going to go in the direction that they are hinting at. And so far, this whole direction of tightening secret layers for scalping, and of course, the kind of pullback from game pieces, the tightening of print runs, it's, it's, it does look like they are following through. Oh, and of course, the removal of public Amazon dumps. You know, <coughs> <coughs> I'm alive. And it's one of these things where we got to step back, we all have to look at our, make our own kind of decisions and outcomes, and we have to be able to discuss this stuff without just being stupid about it. And we got to be careful going online saying, huh, you know, my theory is Shocklands may not go to 2 $3. Let me go online and see if anybody else agrees with me. Remember, we always do the typewriter in the, uh, I don't know, the slot machine pool. You know, we all, that's human nature. When you have a theory... You kind of say, huh, is there anybody else with that theory? I'm going to look online. And that's usually one of our biggest mistakes. People do it with stocks all the time on the stock market. They Google a company to see, what's the news? What's going on? What do you all think? 
They look for articles to read about a, a potential company to invest in. They look for articles or internet posts on MySpace to determine, you know, what are people saying about this magic card? Is it, is it the next card to buy out? If I put $7 into it, will I be able to turn it to $10 in a couple months? Is this a good spec? If I buy 47,200 copies at three cents a piece, will I be able to get a helicopter? You know, people, we all have these ideas. And what usually throws the cold water on the ideas is we go online and we try to look for other feedback. And the problem all of us don't seem to want to accept is that most things on the internet are wrong. And you all know Rudy's always wrong, so I fit into the same basket of people being wrong in clogged toilets on Taco Tuesday. We've talked about that. So that's really today's video. I wanted to give you all the opinion that the Secret Lair thing and the shifts we're seeing in these specialty commander decks of Secret Lair, and of course the internet's already full force, it's trash and everything. I, you know, with the tightening of supply, the shifting behavior, and putting kitty cats and doggies that are cute that people love, with, you know, a potential of everyone already saying, I'm not buying it, it's trash. You know, it makes it very alluring when the morons on the internet with their game pieces are already saying, I'm out. When they're like, I'm back, away, it's all. You know, every time I see that, you know, the kind of opposite effect Rudy kind of, it really gets my attention. You know, when I started getting messages this morning and last night about people talking about this, I was like, I don't really care about Secret Lair. I haven't bought any in ages. And, you know, last time I bought Secret, or last three times I bought Secret Lairs were from collection buying. But this is kind of interesting. This is kind of interesting. And, um... I know some people buy secret layers just to open them and enjoy them. Other people flip the single cards. Other people keep them sealed to try to scalp in the future. Remember, make sure you only use the word scalp, not flip. And um, the secret layer direction may become very attractive for people who want to collect the cards, flip the cards, invest in the cards, or try to flip singles or any of that. It, it may become more and more attractive if Wizards continues to hold true with what they're saying. And that's really the point of this video, because I know people, I've been very against Secret Lair due to the quantity of the releases. Secret Lair just became a meme. There's so many of them, you just can't keep up. You don't remember, you order 10 of them, you don't remember which ones you even got because so much time goes by. It, was, it just became a meme of a terrible product line, and terrible execution, terrible customer experiences. And now, you know, I, I don't know. Because unique cards in small windows of time with limited supply, those are all variables that do lean towards the side of collectability. Even if it is a Wizards Direct kind of product that stores and evil basement people can't sell you, it still becomes a lot more attractive. And I just want to give you all my opinion on that because, you know, it doesn't look that bad. And if Wizards doesn't lie about it, which, in my opinion, so far in the last three months, everything's been very spot on with what they've said was going to happen. Um... It looks pretty attractive, and that's kind of the point of the video, and I hope you guys do your research and figure it out, but um, I wouldn't write off the secret layers moving forward. Uh, 2024 Ford, um, I don't know if they're actually going to slow down on the quantity of secret layers, but based on the shifting behavior, the lack of people buying them, you know, there's not going to be many out there in a 5-10 year window. Um, we don't know which ones, but many of these are going to become expensive, and they will be very, very rare from lack of people even buying these things. So that is something I think everyone should kind of keep their eye on if they're, in, if they're really interested in single cards, flipping singles, collecting these things, or of course investing or keeping them sealed, whatever path you want to take. Um, it is something that I think everyone should be following. So have a beautiful day, everybody.